cash money? Is it better? I get this question quite often. Is it better to buy with cash or is it better to finance it through a bank or owner finance it? Or how do I buy this property? What's the best way? I'm a vacant land investor. I mainly focus on vacant land investments, deals like that, acreage, lots, parcels of land, stuff like that. But for the purpose of this video, entertainment, I'm not advising you on any deals in particular. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just trying to give you a couple ideas maybe. First of all, if you would, subscribe, comment, thumbs up, thumbs down. Take whatever you can give me. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. If you would, smash that subscribe button for me. So this is just going to talk about some of the advantages of paying with cash in a vacant land investment. And a lot of this, you know, is cross crossover to you know other real estate deals and stuff like that but let's just talk about if you're buying with cash money all right cash is king right or wrong i don't know let's check it out so i mean it feels good to say cash right like hey i'm gonna make an offer and if you're gonna come in and lowball somebody that kind of gives you a little bit of like okay i'm, I'm lowballing you you know you wanted twenty thousand for this little piece of land i give you ten thousand but cash you know so maybe it helps you out there hundred thousand dollar piece of property uh i'm gonna give you fifty thousand dollar cash you know i get lowballed all the time on my offers you know i had every offer i've had the last two offers they've been lowball offers and they they've been these cash buyers you know and and it it is good if you're in that situation i guess you know i mean it's definitely worth a shot if you've got the cash and you want to buy something you want to buy some land uh, it's definitely worth it to throw it out there. Um, I've even had people put in an offer cash. So if you're the buyer from the buyer's perspective, you know, I've had them put in a cash offer that I've accepted mainly because it was going to be quick, you know, the cash and quick, you know, I had a guy give me a cash offer and said it was be closed in 14 days or 21 days, you know, two or three weeks, you know, with a bank or something like that. 14 days doesn't really happen, you know, not in my experience anyway. So the closing and the title company and the bank and the loan documents and loan processing and loan this and loan that and sign that, you know, it ain't going to happen in 14 or 21 days. And you'd be lucky if it happens in 30 days, you know? Um, and then they change it up on me like, Hey, we're, here's our cash offer. Here's when we're going to close, you know, 14 days or 21 days. And then, you know, here it comes. Oh, we need another seven days. Oh, we need this. And then, hey, would you, would you mind if we just went ahead and went to the bank and got a deal? And so, you know, it can get a little squirrely like that, but um, it's done cash. And sometimes you don't even have to use cash necessarily. You could tap equity in a home or something like that. You know, I've used equity lines, you know, like, so let's say you got some equity built up in your house. You could take that equity and use it to buy another property that's less expensive or you know, use that cash. Let's say you've got $30,000 equity. I want to use that to buy this piece of land that I think is worth 60000 So you take that 30000 equity out of your house, and then you can present a cash offer because you've got that cash out of your house. They don't, it doesn't matter to them where it came from. You've got that $30,000. Now you can make a cash offer basically by using your equity in a home or something or another piece of property or another piece of investment property, something like that. So you can use a cash offer you know, by taking cash out of something else and actually financing it, you know, if you really, you know, get down to the nitty gritty about it, it's a financed offer, but to the, to the buyer or to the seller, you're presenting a cash offer. So that's great. Um, and it, it gives you a better negotiating position. In my opinion, a lot of times when you, um, are doing a, a cash offer, but you know, there's some times where it doesn't really matter. You know, I've, I've gone in with cash and, and they don't care. You know, they say, well, this is the price that I want, you know, and they're just that stick that is not going to move, you know, a hundred thousand dollars. And we don't care if you have cash. We don't care if you got a home equity loan. We don't care if you're taking the money out of the whatever. We don't care. We want a hundred thousand dollars for the property and that's it. So, you know, your cash position may or may not work and you don't know till you try, you know, there's no, no limit on the amount of offers you can make on a property. So you can try one thing. If that works great. If it doesn't, you go back with another offer and another offer and another offer, and then you just find another property if that didn't work out, you know? So some of the things about a cash offer too, is that, you know, you, you eliminate some of the contingencies. There's no financing contingency. So if you're in a competitive situation where there's multiple offers coming in on a property, then, you know, your cash offer is strong through the fact that, you know, 
the buyer from the buyer's perspective or from the seller's perspective, they don't have to worry about the deal falling through because the financing fall, fall through. If you search the MLS or, you know, realtor websites, you can see like do a keyword search on financing or something like that. And I bet you'll find in the description of some of these properties that is back on the market because buyers financing fell through financing fell through. You know, you'll find a few of those in the MLS, you know, and it's a, it's a frustrating situation to be in. So from a buyer's perspective, somebody coming in with a cash offer, proof of funds, the money's there. If you agree to the deal, it's done. You know, they may feel more secure that, Hey, this is a good deal. You know, even though those finance offers may be just as secure, there's still that contingency in there that this financing could, you know, go away and then the deal falls apart and then you're back to square one where then you had a hot property. Now people may have moved on from it. Now, now the sharks are circling like, Oh, we're going to get us a deal because this deal fell through and we're going to come in and give them a deal that they, you know, they're just going to take it because they're desperate at this point. So, um, from a cash offer, from a cash perspective, you know, you've got a couple things going for you. Um, other buyers may have trouble getting financing, especially on like a vacant land deal or something like that. If you're going to buy a piece of land to build a house on, some banks may be a little bit more weary of a, just a vacant raw lot, raw land, or they may require a bigger down payment than a house. You know, on a, on a vacant land deal, you're not going to get like a two or 3% down like you would with an FHA loan or something like that. So, um, so a buyer trying to sell a vacant piece of property may have trouble or maybe dealing with a smaller pool of potential buyers just because, you know, the financing options may not be available. And there are not as many financing options as there is with houses. You know, there's no first time land buyers, um, you know, property, you know, loans like there's like a FHA or something like that. Now there is like USDA loans and stuff like that, agricultural loans. You know, the VA has agricultural loan programs depending on the size of land that you're selling or buying stuff like that. So is a cash offer better? Most of the time, you know, it, it has more advantages than a, a finance offer. I mean, nobody comes in there and says, Hey, I'll take this property for a hundred thousand dollars and I'm using financing, you know? So, uh, that doesn't sound as good as, Hey, I'll buy this product for a hundred thousand dollars and I'm using cash, you know? So, you know, overall I would say cash is kind of a bigger, uh, a stronger position to come in with than a finance option. But you know, if you're going to get the deal done either way, you're going to get the deal done either way. So, um, and if you do pay cash, well, your cash is gone now it's in land. So if you needed that cash for something else, you may not want to, you know, put that out there as a, as a cash offer. And then you're like, well, I've got all this cash in a, a piece of dirt, piece of raw land. Now what do I do? You know, cause you know, then you've got that, that situation as well. So, um, just a few things to think about. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you had any ideals or any thoughts on cash offers versus finance offers and as far as vacant land or houses or investment properties, appreciate you watching the video. Subscribe, comment, let me know what you think.